unravel the potential of the next Packers cornerback, Kyrie Jackson. With his imposing 6-3 physique and exceptional skills, he promises to bolster Green Bay's defense. While Jair Alexander and Eric Stokes face injury concerns, Jackson emerges as a solid option to a depth and competitiveness to the team. His ability to excel in both coverage and run defense highlights him as a versatile and valuable athlete. Get ready to witness Jackson's brilliance on the NFL gridiron and follow his journey towards success. Subscribe now for more updates on future Packers and don't forget to leave your like to support the channel. Unpacking Future Packers, number 41, Oregon CB Kyrie Jackson. On paper, the Green Bay Packers seem to have a solid group of cornerbacks. Jer Alexander is a fully professional caliber player. Carrington Valentine showed promise last season as a seventh-round rookie. Kaisian Nixon is back to occupy the nickel position. If former first-round pick Eric Stokes can rediscover his rookie form, the Packers could have a solid foundation. There are obvious concerns with this group. Can Alexander and Stokes stay healthy? Will Valentine fall victim to a sophomore slump? With question marks surrounding the group, it would be expected for the Packers to add another body to reinforce the cornerback room on Lombardi Avenue, 1265. A potential target for the Packers in the 2024 NFL Draft is Kyrie Jackson. The Oregon cornerback ranks 41st in the unpacking future Packers countdown, transferred to Alabama, Jackson recorded five tackles for loss, two sacks, three interceptions, and seven pass breakups during his lone season in Eugene. Jackson looks great off the bus. The former Crimson Tide cornerback is tall 6'3 and has a lengthy frame. He uses that frame to give the quarterback a narrow window to throw. Jackson definitely fits the mold of a long cornerback who will be able to use his frame to get to balls and contest passes that other defenders of more traditional size would struggle with, said Zachary Neal, editor-in-chief of DuckSwire.com. While he could stand to ramp up the physicality a bit at the point of attack, his 78-inch wingspan certainly gives him an advantage. Jackson is a physical cornerback and likes to take the fight to wide receivers at the line of scrimmage. The Oregon cornerback would fit perfectly into Jeff Halfley's system. He redirects wide receivers at the line of scrimmage to disrupt timing and stays connected. Jackson is smooth in his pedal and can change direction without needing to gear down. He limits big plays and according to Pro Football Focus only gave up one touchdown last season, Jackson does a very good job of being physical at the line of scrimmage in press coverage situations, and he's able to use his size to his advantage at the catch point and on bigger receivers who are trying to go up for the ball," said Neal. His hip fluidity and mobility could stand to improve a bit, but he already has a lot of excellent intangibles in his game. Jackson is attentive in coverage and does a good job of reading the wide receiver's eyes to turn his head and make plays on the ball. One thing Jackson showed in his year at Oregon was a very good talent for tracking the ball in the air and focusing when it came his way, said Neal. Throughout the year, we saw fewer and fewer attacks against him as he locked down half the field, but when the ball did come his way, Jackson was ready and prepared. Jackson is a willing participant in run support and likes to come downhill to tackle ball carriers near or behind the line of scrimmage. He has a high average of tackles as a tackler and has only been marked with three missed tackles during his college career. Run support is something that can improve for Jackson as he gains weight, but he's a physical player who doesn't shy away from contact, said Neil. He often stepped up in the alleys and made plays, fit with the Packers in a perfect world, Alexander would stay healthy and play every game of the 2024 season. Stokes puts the last two seasons behind him and returns to form. If these two things happen, the Packers are all set at cornerback. Even the best laid plans go awry. Brian Gutekunst recently said he feels comfortable with the cornerback depth if everyone can stay healthy. Recent history suggests that won't happen. Gutekunst would be wise to add another talented cornerback to that room. If the Packers choose to wait until the third round or day three to add a cornerback to the mix, Jackson could be a potential target in that range. I think Kyrie Jackson has the skills and intangibles of an elite defender at the next level, possessing great speed and length that will make him valuable in pass coverage against big receivers, said Neal, as he continues to develop. 
we'll see him rise among the league's top players. Given his size and athletic ability, Jackson has the tools to become a lockdown cornerback. Even with the Packers having a solid foundation built at cornerback, a team can never have talented coverage players enough. If he lands in Green Bay, he could compete against Stokes and Valentine for starting reps alongside Alexander. Even if he doesn't crack the cornerback rotation, he has special teams experience to be a key asset on coverage units. Have you already left your like? Let's move on to another piece of news, Kansas State T.E. Ben Sinnott could play the jack-of-all-trades role in the Packers' offense. The Green Bay Packers are in good shape at the tight end position, but Kansas State's Ben Sinnott could fill the Swiss Army knife role in Matt LaFleur's offense. You name it, and Sinnott has done it for the Kansas State offense. Just last season alone, Sinnott saw snaps off the defense, in line as a traditional tight end, in the slot and even out wide as a receiver, Sinnott has played 1,754 snaps in his career, most of them coming in the last two seasons. As a pass catcher during that period, Sinnott has caught 66% of his 119 targets with an impressive 14.2 yards per reception with 10 touchdowns. Specifically last season, Sinnott ranked ninth among all tight ends in yards per route run, up efficiency metric, and 32nd in yards after the catch average. He was also one of the highest graded run and pass blockers at the tight end position by Pf. Kansas State moved him around quite a bit, said Brennan Rupp of Packers Wire. He's a versatile weapon. He's a very good blocker and equally effective as a pass catcher. He can be a battering ram as a run blocker. He has natural hands, and Kansas State used him on tight screens. I really think if the Packers use another pick on tight end, it will be Sinnott. He's a complete tight end who can help improve your fast-paced defense and at the same time give Love another weapon. Sinnott is an excellent athlete. He measures 6 minus 3 and 250 pounds and posted an almost perfect relative athletic score RAS at the NFL scouting combine of 9.72. For some context, Luke Musgrave posted an RAS of 9.78 and Tucker Craft 9.58 in the last draft cycle. Jim Nagy, the executive director of the Reese's Senior Bowl, would point out that Sinnott had the highest vertical jump, the longest broad jump, and the fastest three cones of any tight end at the combine. With Sinnott's versatility, he could really fill virtually any role LaFleur needs, but immediately, he has taken on the H-back role, with Josiah DeGuara signing with Jacksonville, but bringing a more dynamic presence to the position. The H-back is often asked to block, but this player must also be able to impact the passing game and needs to be versatile and able to move around the formation. This element contributes to what LaFleur calls illusion of complexity, which in short means keeping defenses off balance and guessing. As this player can fill a variety of roles, it becomes harder pre-snap for opponents to understand what the offense is doing, helping to create confusion and mismatches to exploit, especially when there's potential for play action from the position. Henry Pearson, an undrafted rookie in 2023, who spent most of last season on the practice squad, is a player who is already on the Packers roster and who can also fill the H-back role. I also mentioned the idea of Tyler Davis seeing some snaps in that capacity during training camp. Sinnott is currently the fifth-ranked tight end by Pf in a admittedly not very strong class and is listed as the 141st overall prospect. Depending on where you look, Pro Football Network says Sinnott could be a mid to late day to pick, while NFL.com has him as a day three selection. As we bid farewell, dear viewers, we cannot emphasize enough the importance of staying updated on the latest news from the Green Bay Packers. With Ben Sinnott from Kansas State emerging as a potential key piece in the Packers' offense, it's essential to stay connected so as not to miss any exciting plays. So, if you haven't already, subscribe now to receive all the latest updates directly to your feeds. And don't forget to leave that valuable like to support our work and keep the ball in play. Together, let's continue to cheer for our team's success.